Sims' research was conducted on enslaved black women without anesthesia. Sims cared more about the experiments than in providing therapeutic treatment, and he caused untold suffering by operating under the racist notion that black people did not feel pain. His use of enslaved black bodies as medical test subjects falls into a long, ethically beret history of medical apartheid that includes the Tuskegee syphilis experiment and Henrietta Lacks. We'll have to go back some 25 years when I first heard about Anarcha Lucy and Betsy. There's this popular painting, call it the Robert Tom painting, but it's a depiction of these three women. They're surrounded by white men and they look like they're enslaved. I started doing some in-depth research on these women and that's when I found out that J. Marion Sims, he's pretty much known throughout the medical community as the father of gynecology, having touted or claims that he was the one who perfected the Sims retractor and some of the instruments that they were using. The experimentation that he conducted on enslaved women and immigrant women, but primarily enslaved African women and their descendants is horrifying. Procedures without anesthesia uh, and then without consent. In Montgomery, Alabama, there is a, a plaque that says that he's the father of gynecology. And the more I read that, the more I go by that statue, I've always asked the question, well, where are the mothers? Right now, there's a reckoning with the monuments and Civil War and American Revolutionary War heroes, if you will. Uh, but no one is talking about these women that were victimized and used as experiments. It's time that we need to have this conversation. The Mothers of Gynecology will be on top of a two-foot platform engraved with bricks around the base of it. And Arca looks like a warrior. She's tall, she's about 15 feet tall. Betsy, she's pregnant, and she stands about nine feet tall. And then there's Lucy, that's about six feet. And there's an expression on each one of their faces. There's one of pain, one of honor, and one of strength. They're made with discarded items, brass, bronze, all different types of metals, found objects, turned into a beautiful piece of art. I give tours in Montgomery, Alabama. Brian and Kristen came for the opening of this amazing museum. Became really fast friends, um, immediately connected over the fact that I also had a tour here in San Francisco's Japantown. Um, and then Michelle came out to visit us a couple of times. And I think on the last time that she was here, we were walking around um, our neighborhood in Hayes Valley. I turned the corner and I saw this amazing statue done by Dana Albany. I was in awe. The next week, we were at a dinner. I was sitting across from this woman and this woman said, you live in San Francisco, where do you live? And we said, we live in Hayes Valley. And she said, oh, I worked on Tara. And both of us were just mind blown and said, we have to connect you with Michelle. And so she ended up connecting Michelle to Dana Albany. A year later, we are here with this monument. I don't like to say that the, the stars aligned, but destiny was calling us. <laughs> and they called us to San Francisco. To come to San Francisco, and especially with this community, I mean, this is where Dana's art kind of unfolds. But to know that this is part of the old or one of the last black communities, in San Francisco, where you know these women are going to be erected, I think is is phenomenal. When you talk about displacement, when you talk about being discarded, black people in San Francisco understand what that means. You know, it just it just seems like this is the right place to do it. When my friends, people who took my tours, found out that I was coming, they started asking for donations. So from there, it just kind of stuck. People were bringing donations, spoons, mufflers, you name it, they brought it. There's 15 artists in there that said, we will volunteer our time. And so that's what's happening. People just want to be a part of something monumental in this respect. I saw Dana's post about this on Instagram and immediately I wanted to be involved. The fact of the matter that nobody really knows these stories yet I mean, it's, it's time for people to be educated. 
I donated a pair of wall sconce candelabras that were from my grandparents' home. I can't wait for people to shout out, oh, look, a candelabra, you know, and I know that that was what I put there, you know. I'm, I'm going to probably, like, cry when I see them on these women's thighs, you know, these big, strong pieces. I feel like this monument is going to be so magnificent. It's going to slow people down long enough that they're forced to learn something. And I think that's a great way to teach people. It's not for my children, it's for my children's children and those that will come long after us. I know that you could not talk about these women without talking about James Marion Sims, but I think he's had his due. I want people to say, no, he was not a man of his time. Surely he knew that what he was doing was wrong because these were human beings. And my end goal is to not only amplify their voices, but to bring some humanity to these women. And when you come to Montgomery, I will tell you about each one of them. It was an early morning strike. The statue of Dr. J. Marion Sims taken down, carted off in the back of a Parks Department truck. Sims losing his choice perch at 103rd and 5th Avenue after Mayor de Blasio's Monuments Commission determined the good that he did. He was known as the father of gynecology, the inventor of the speculum for female exams, was outweighed by the bad. He performed experimental surgery on female slaves without anesthesia. The debate continued even after Sims was carted off. He was the father of American obstetrics, okay? Their whole reasoning is that he operated on 12 slave women. Well, he was a doctor in 1845, Birmingham, Alabama. What else was he supposed to do? Not operate on them and let them die? I'm thrilled. I read the horrible story about what he did to these black women in the South. Do we have a statue of Joseph Mengele in this park? The Sim statue will be relocated at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, where he is buried. Officials say there will be a display explaining his history. Placing the sculpture near his gravesite is not meant to glorify him, said Greenwood President Richard J. Moylan. He said the facility plans to document Sims' story, including his shameful experimentation on enslaved women in the South between 1845 and 1849. Mayor de Blasio told me he wants to see both sides of the story. It's very complex. It's, it's not pretty. It's in some ways very painful. But it's not just one or the other side. How do you think his descendants will feel reading these signs if they go to visit the grave of their ancestor? You know, uh, I don't know, but I can just tell you, uh, Greenwood Cemetery is, you know, obviously a working cemetery, but it's also a major historical site. So I don't think it's sort of the same as if you're talking about a private secluded cemetery. I think this is a fair way to address a very thorny situation. Contributions to Benison, quite possibly a woman of color. Dana.